What's up everyone, Fool Animix here. Welcome back to the underrated gem. Wait, what's that? Oh, we're not doing that today? Let's go! So you know the cliche, I wasn't going to talk about so-and-so, and then proceeds to talk about it? <laughs> you know? Um, I I'm doing that right now. To be fair, my case is a little bit different. I was going to talk about the show, I just didn't really know when. I was gonna do it right after the show finished, but then the special was announced, and then I watched the special, even though it flew under my radar. And now we're here to talk about it, woo! And the show in question is Wonder Egg Priority. This show is one of my favorite shows that came from Winter 2021 anime. I just really enjoyed it and I was invested from start to finish unlike other shows that I was watching. After the show finished with a lackluster ending, a special was announced and then I watched it and fuck it was bad. But before talking about the special, I first gotta talk about the show. So without further ado and without more procrastinating, let's talk about Wonder Egg Priority. Wonder Egg is about a young girl called Otto I, who wants to bring back her dead friend. After talking to a cicada about things not being Daijobu, she discovers wonder eggs that move people to the after I wasn't really paying attention. Along the way, she meets friends in similar situations of things not being Daijo, but I'm just gonna stop before it gets out of hand. Thus, we follow I and her friends on this journey of fun, joy, and depression. I love everything about this show. I'm probably the one guy on the internet that could talk about the show for like a month or four because the show is so appealing and interesting. The writing, for the most part, is one of the strongest features of the show. From the world building to the lore to the reason of how the fuck did we get here, the process, yes it's another word for pacing, shut up, and the tone always exceed my expectations for every new episode I watch. Show Don't Tell is a basic phase for creating and writing a movie or TV series. Showing what happens instead of telling is a better way of keeping people engaged with the story. With Wonder Egg, I felt like I was figuring stuff out at the same pace as the show, but still eluding crucial details that I wanted to find out. The themes of using metaphors and symbolism to capture one's inner demons is unique to say the least. The troubled subject of suicide and the temptation of death is portrayed with bright colours and amazing music. Oh yeah, have you guys heard the music? It's pretty freaking lit. Try and tell me that you do not like the music from this show. You have the bubbly, uplifting friendship and the cinematic synth wave of Brand New World. These songs in particular are my favorites, but there are many other great songs in the OST. The animation is also spectacular. It's surprisingly detailed in its edges and shading, but also has a unique style to it. The characters are also very good. Unique standalone characters that would probably never interact with one another brought together with a similar goal of taking down Thanos and using the Infinity Stones to bring back everyone from- Wait. Oh wait, this is from my Marvel review, my bad. These standalone characters are at their best interacting with each other. It's a great way of slowing the story down and connecting with these characters as well as providing small moments throughout the show of these girls just enjoying each other's company. These girls are all complex from their motivations to their backstories making them some of the most compelling and lovable characters even with their flaws. You spend a lot of time with these girls learning about their drive and reason behind their goals. At some points I doesn't even seem like the most fleshed out character compared to the other girls. Rika has a hardened exterior that bottles up feelings feelings of guilt and trauma after causing one of her fans suicides. This arrogant and judgmental character realizes that she can be true to herself with her friends and comes to terms with her denial. On the other hand, Momo deals with the insecurities of her appearance and dealing with her ambiguous sexuality. And Nehru, I, I, don't, I don't know her deal, to be honest. <laughs> I thought I did, but apparently I don't. And finally, we have I, who I think is all right, I guess. Her character is a bit too cliche at some points, but I still like her as this show's main protagonist. And with that said, let's talk about the most ambitious antagonist in anime, The Temptation of Death, or a 14-year-old robot with daddy issues, either one. The supposed antagonist of the show is The Temptation of Death, manifestations of trauma, insecurities, and suffering, which leads to the suicides of young girls. Now, normal scenes like this don't get much of reaction from people other than, oh my god, I feel so bad for these characters, they're going through so much pain and suffering, oh my god. But the thing that makes the antagonist effective is that this happens in real life, which is probably the most disturbing piece about this show. 
it's realism. The subject of death is a very delicate thing to talk about, let alone present in a show. Which is why sometimes you have bright colours and light-hearted moments that are used for symbolism in the show. You can have a cute scene of our characters interacting with one another, until later on you see said characters witnessing the most horrific thing they have ever seen in their life. Presented with colours and wacky... Whatever the fuck these things are. I won't say there's any tonal whiplash in any episode, but just be prepared for some depressing shit, because this show is an emotional ride. Finally, it's time to talk about the special of Wonder Egg Priority. Cloverworks, why have you become a curse to anime? Like, what the fuck? Now, it's obviously not Cloverworks' fault, it's just a coincidence that Promise Neverland and Wonder Egg Priority both ended up shit. But I just don't understand how you can drop a ball so fast with such a great show. Basically, what happens is that you are bombarded with information that clutters up the runtime, various things happen for no reason, and you get answers to questions as if it's a YouTuber apology video. I have never really gotten mad this much from a bad ending. I didn't like the quintessential quintuplets ending, but I didn't get angry over it, whereas now I'm borderline psychopathic because the special is the literal definition of wasted potential. But even so, I still like Wonder Egg Priority. Majority of Wonder Egg's fanbase hate the ending for obvious reasons, but I've had people say that the show isn't worth watching anymore, and I disagree with that. Wonder Egg is still a good show even with a bad ending. The experience that you get from watching this anime is different from you'll ever see in any other show. This show takes inspiration from other shows but makes it unique in its own way. But I've said before that not every anime is meant for everyone, and this show is the literal example of that. This show deals with a lot of traumatic and depressing themes, so if you're not okay with that type of stuff, then I wouldn't recommend the show to you. As well, if you're not okay with depressed 14 year old girls going through psychological problems, that's okay too. Understandable. Have a nice day. But I do recommend the show for those that don't mind this kind of stuff, and those who like great imagery and awesome music. And yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Leave a like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.